Let's get the show started, shall we? Live from BC Children's Hospital in Vancouver, it's the 29th Annual Miracle Weekend. Yes, welcome inside BC Children's Hospital. You know, this place serves one million children living in BC and the Yukon. They treat the severely ill kids, of course, but they also take care of all those smaller things like the bad ear infection that happens at 2.30 in the morning or a broken elbow. Those things can feel like big things to little people, sure. I'm sure. So for the next four hours, all day tomorrow, we will give you an insight into so many heroic stories and how this hospital is such an important place to many families around beautiful British Columbia. I'm here with a couple of very special guests. This uh, little guy with the chunky legs is Casey Dick and uh, his mom, Whitney. Whitney, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, I have to say, I was reading your story and I, my heart stopped a couple of times. Uh, Casey was a month old and had a cold. And tell us what happened after that. Yeah, so Casey was seeming pretty congested. I have an older son who'd been miserable with a cold that week. And uh, once he had a bit of a fever, decided to take him in. He was only four weeks old. And uh, within 24 hours of us being admitted to the hospital, um, Casey suffered respiratory failure, which led to a prolonged cardiac arrest. Uh, so they were working on him for about 45 minutes, trying to get his heart working again. And, um, and once they did, once they saved him, we were uh, transported by a specialized team once he was on a ventilator to Children's Hospital. And then what happened after that? Um, well, we were, we were told to expect that uh, because of the prolonged um, oxygen deprivation that he would likely um, have severe brain damage. And the best case scenario was that it would be um, mild to severe brain damage. But um, with such a long arrest, um, that's what we were expecting. But we needed to wait until they could do a CT scan um, 72 hours later. So 72 hours later, they did the CT, and what did they tell you? Um, we were, there were six of us praying in the room, as we'd been doing for days, and um, the head intensivist came in, he interrupted our, our prayer meeting, and he said, um, we just wanted to tell you that there's no signs of abnormality, that we can't see any damage to his brain. Amazing. Amazing, yeah. It was uh, a winning the lottery a million times over kind of moment. So for you, how important is Children's Hospital? Uh, Children's Hospital um, has been um, a place that we have come to love and rely on like we never expected to. Um, and, you know, when your child is clinging to life, you want nothing more than for them to get better. And you'd give anything for that to happen. And we believe that God has used Children's Hospital uh, to perform a miracle in our son, and he is living proof that uh, miracles do happen, and they happen here. We are very, very happy for you, both you, Whitney, and Casey. So happy to see those beautiful blue eyes. And if you're listening to that story and you're not moved at home, come on, people. Get off the couch, get on your computer, get on your phone, 310 BCCH. Give us a call, make a donation, make a difference. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We are pleased to introduce you now to our 2016 champion child. I had a chance to chat with Aiden Chin earlier this evening. Five years ago, cancer tore apart Aiden's world and forced him into BC Children's Hospital for weeks at a time. But you know what? Cancer couldn't break the deep bond Aiden had with his brother and his friends. In fact, it did quite the opposite. I don't expect my cancer to come back. It's a new chapter in my life. I guess there is a sense of being a child, being a teen again. So there are times when I do feel free. I don't think I could ever fully go back to what it was like before. Bren was seven years old and I was only 11, so we both were just kids, right? I had no clue. I, I, I heard the cancer word. I was just like, what is that? Okay, maybe I'm going to see him uh, tomorrow. 
My eyes kind of started opening up and I was just like, Aiden's not gonna be here for a while. I'm only gonna see him maybe a couple times a week. It just keeps on going to my head, like what if he was not gonna make it? What if I wasn't gonna see him at home anymore? There were times when I was feeling really sick and out of it and tired, and there were times when it wasn't always the chemo, it was about how other patients in the hospital were doing. You, you don't know what it's like, because I've been through so much pain, but I want to be here for two weeks. And they've been here for six months, you say? And I was sad that there were other patients and there were other children that were younger than me going through cancers that were harder than mine. Basically from that point on I was like, why don't I try to get through it and then hopefully come back, help out. That's what I've basically been trying to do since I finished treatment. I got to join this club at the hospital called the Oncology Teen Group Club. It's something that you can't find out of the hospital. As a survivor, I'm still part of the teen group. There's still a lot of support that I can give to them and they can give to me because there's an understanding that uh, treatment isn't over when you're a survivor. There's still um, an emotional side of things. You have friends that are going through it, friends that are, aren't going to make it through it, and that becomes a reality for you. It's not just over. Brooke was a friend of mine that I met in the hospital, and uh, she became basically a, um, a sister to me. Brooke was definitely the closest friend that I had that I lost. The day before she passed away, I did get to see her in the hospital, and I did get to hold her hand, talk to her, and say goodbye, and tell her I loved her one last time. And I don't believe that you can accept something like that. You have to, I guess, learn to cope with it more. Before, I felt like cancer was something that was rare, that one in a ton of kids would be diagnosed, but it's not rare, and there's a lot of kids in oncology, children that are going through what you went through, and pain that is um, unexplainable. I want to be able to give back to those that have helped me in the hospital, that have made it so that I can go out there and be active and just live my life again. It's a really good feeling that I could just go home and do something with my brother now. Without Children's Hospital, my brother wouldn't be here, so I'm eternally grateful for them being there. I'm looking forward to staying connected to the hospital because it's been such a big part. Giving back and uh, pursuing the dreams that I have and being able to do that because of BC Children's Hospital. America weekend coming to a close, but what a weekend it's been. It's time to check in for a big total, guys. It is. Let's so it. before we do this, though, I really would like to say thanks to all the volunteers working behind yeah. the scenes who helped us out. Um, yes. You've been amazing. Yes. You've been yes. It, really, it really is a cast of thousands. So do we want to do this right now? Yeah, we do. Okay, let's do it. All right. <laughs> let's turn the numbers. Okay. Eight. Zero, zero, six, six, eight, eight, one, zero, zero. yeah! Whisper their prayers, take joy in knowing that everyone shares their faith and hope and love. Little ones laughing, lost in their play, through grateful eyes you can hear them say. Yes, they do. 
here's hoping someday what happens for you and peace comes to you from above miracles happen with love miracles happen with love and with help from the angel and all of us miracles happen oh yes they do here's hoping someday what happens for you and peace comes to you from above